every day. But when you talk about Glenn, it's, uh, you know, I was trying to figure out what to say. And what do you say about somebody that's meant so much to your life? You know, my mother used to always talk about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit is everywhere. And that's why you can't have prejudice, racism, because you never know where you will find the Holy Spirit. And when I was here at Howard, my last couple of years, I was looking for something. I was looking for, for guidance. I was looking for a path. I was looking for somebody to help put me on that path. And then I met Glenn. Uh, you know, he took me under his wing at a very young age. And yeah, he taught me about sports casting and all that stuff. And, and that was wonderful. But I remember we used to just ride. Remember that blue Jeep Grand Cherokee used to have? I mean, we used to just ride. He would take me to places that uh, I never thought I would see. He took me over to Anacostia one time. And I'm, you know, I'm from Detroit. I'm not that tough. Pretend like I am sometimes, but when I went over there, you know, Glenn walked in the, in the Anacostia. And Anacostia backed up from him. And I'm talking about some of the hardest toughest hustlers that you'll ever see, you know? But he was the kind of person that always just spoke from his heart. Uh, the kind of person that, you know, if he had five dollars and you needed five dollars, you had five dollars. He was so kind, he is so kind, but at the same time, he's a tough, tough, brilliant, brilliant, I mean, one of the smartest, if not the smartest man that I've ever met. You know, I call him sometimes at three or four in the morning, still. And you know what? Every time he answers the phone, he talks me off ledges. I remember two things, and, and the stories just come to my mind, and I'm just gonna tell you a story. Two things. I was gonna get married. Right? And I was leaving college, had a girl that I really cared about, but I didn't have any money. So I went down to Waco, Texas for my first job, and I called him back. I said, Glenn, I need $1,500 so I can buy this ring, so I can give it to him. He said, uh, okay, hold on. So he put the phone on hold for a second. He came back, he said, okay, I'm gonna give you the money, but listen, just, you know, ease on into that for a second. Just see how you like it down there. And if you like it, then I'll just send you the money and you know, you can buy the ring. So she came to visit me and I said, and the ring was, I don't even, you know, $1,500. It wasn't even a half of a half of a half of a carry. And she said, she came down, she said, she said to me, she said, I said, well, you know, what kind of ring would you want if you ever decided, you know? She was like, well, it would have to be a minimum of two carats. I, like, I called Glenn back and I said, thank you, brother. You just saved me a lot of money. And he really did. But the other story that really sticks out, uh, you know, as we go through these sportscasters and professional football players and basketball players and great businessmen, and, you know, you go through things in life. You go through adversity and you have to, to rise to certain adversity. Where I was working in Huntsville, Alabama, which was uh, the worst experience of my life. And <laughs> they used to have a rebel flag on the morning show set. And, uh, the man that I was working for, he, uh, he started taking liberties and talking to me in that kind of way. And I didn't really know how to handle it. And I got scared and I got confused and he almost broke me. I called Glenn. I said, Glenn, I'm done. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go back to graduate school. I'm gonna be an assistant, graduate assistant. 
and I, I can't take it anymore. And it was once again three in the morning. And I heard a pause. And the first thing he said was, motherfucker, you better stay your ass down there. <laughs> what you talking about? You done come too far. And I'll never forget that. <laughs> and then I said, oh, you know what? Yeah, you're right. I don't want to go back to school anyway. So, but you know, that was a long time ago. And not only is he my friend, not only is he my brother, He's like my father, you know? And uh, people always ask me, they say, Gus, how do you always stay so positive? How did you get that style of, of being excited and positive and saying good things about people? What's the secret? And I just gotta smile and do one of these. But the secret is, I work for Glenn. Thank you.